Welcome to the Biz Bash podcast, where we make biz strategy a piece of cake. I'm Elizabeth. And I'm Cammie, but you might know us better as Eliza and Calligraphy and Cammie Monet. We want to help you, our fellow stationers, artists, and calligraphers, confidently build a profitable and personality-driven creative biz. We're here to share our honest-to-goodness advice and actionable strategies for ambitious artists. So put on your party hat, quit being a procrastinator gator, and let's get this party started. Hey guys, welcome back for episode 15 of the Biz Bash podcast. Today we are so excited to bring you Morgan Mendez of Lady Ilg Photography. And we're going to talk about uh, the role of photographers on the wedding day, as well as the role of photographers when it comes to sharing photos with other vendors in the industry. Because as I'm sure most of you know, the dynamics between vendors in the wedding industry can be so interesting um, and really different. And I feel like sometimes competitive and a little weird. Um, But Morgan has always been amazing, um, not only with her clients, but other vendors in the industry when it comes to sharing. So we just kind of want to break down some of the walls, um, some of the unknowns about like what goes on behind the scenes for photographers, what's really going on in their mind, if you will. So Morgan, welcome. We are so excited to have you here today. Thank you. I'm excited to be here as well. It's fun to be on the on the other side of the microphone. <laughs> yes. And I was interviewed for Morgan's podcast. So we're so excited to put you on the other end of the microphone <laughs> and hear a little bit about you. Um, Morgan and I actually did go to high school together back in the day, but that feels like ages ago, to be honest. Um, So Morgan is based out of Denver, Colorado. She's married to her husband, Frank, has a wonderful, huge Great Dane named Kai, who's like the love of her life besides Frank. (laughs) Um, But I just want to ask you, Morgan, how did you get your start in photography? Like when did that passion kind of um, emerge? Yeah, so um, it's really kind of funny because I fell into photography by mistake. I never really saw myself being a photographer when I was younger. I just, I like taking photos, but it never really, I would never really consider it like actually a huge passion of mine. So, um, you know, throwback to right when we graduated high school, 2011, it does seem like ages ago. It's crazy <laughs> that we're almost coming up on our 10 year anniversary, but oh, uh, <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> Um, but I straight out of high school really didn't know what I was doing or what to do. So, um, so I took a job as a full-time nanny just to kind of figure out my life. Um, and at the time I was living on my own, I was one of those people who kind of grew up way too quick and, um, moved out at 18 and, you know, lived by myself and had bills to pay. And, um, so I was, I was nannying, I was working at a shoe store and I also had a blog at the time called short sleeves pants that was read around the world. I don't have it anymore, but my readers were like, Hey Morgan, you should write a book. It was kind of like a daily devotional for teenage girls. So I wrote a book and I wanted to raise money to get it published. And, um, So I just decided, well, why don't I um, offer free photo shoots for a donation? I have a point and shoot camera. I I like photography, so why not? So it got to the point where, um, you know, people really took well to that. And I ended up getting better at what I was doing and ended up purchasing more equipment and then decided I wasn't getting paid enough for it. And so I decided to kind of turn it into a business and um, didn't really take it very seriously until I lost my nannying job because the family that I was nannying for was moving away. And so I couldn't find another job at the time. And I again, was living on my own, had bills to pay. And so I was kind of forced into photography full time and just made it work because I had to make it work. And so now I've been doing it for six years, uh, a little over five years full time. And, um, and now I, I specialize in luxury mountain weddings in Colorado. So that's my story. (laughs) I like how you just casually were like, oh, I just wrote a book, you know, no big deal or anything. <laughs> just drop that in there. Um, no big deal at all. So that's awesome. <laughs> Love hearing your story and 
luxury mountain weddings is like my aesthetic, you guys. Like I feel like that is me. <laughs> like <laughs> I love mountains. But anyway, um, Elizabeth, um, why don't you get started on some of the questions that we had for Morgan just about um, why is it so weird for photographers to share their images? And we all know we're trying to please the bride and groom on the wedding day. We have a burden responsibility to them. But we obviously know that our side is being a stationer. But tell us more about the responsibility you feel as a wedding photographer. Yeah, so that's that's kind of an interesting question because I, I don't know that I really put pressure on myself, honestly, or even have in the past necessarily felt responsibility to share images with vendors. Um, but I think the burden of responsibility boils down to what am I willing to do in order to grow my business? And we're definitely going to go more into depth about this and, you know, the benefits of sharing images with vendors uh, later on in this conversation. But yeah, the question is, am I willing to put myself out there and make my make a small sacrifice that in the long run might really help my business or at least try to help my business? And the answer is yes. And sometimes I do get vendors who still don't share my images and, you know, whatever, and that's okay. But for the most part, it really works. So that's kind of the burden of responsibility doesn't really, for me at least, fall on, you know, then like the vendor side. It really more so falls on like, what am I going to do to help grow my business? And part of that is building relationships with vendors and sharing images. So I hope that yeah. answers your question. <laughs> That that definitely does answer it. And I would love to hear as well, not only um, in terms of sharing with vendors, but your client really does come first. So I'm kind of curious, like as a photographer, like we're not in your shoes. We've never shot a wedding. Like what what does it really feel like to shoot a wedding day to know that the couple is relying on you to capture like the biggest day of their life. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, let's just start by saying that weddings aren't for everyone. <laughs> um, <laughs> it, it does. There's a lot of pressure, um, you know, on your shoulders. It's, it's, you know, if you mess it up, there's no redo at all. So you have to really know what you're doing. Um, but, you know, practice makes perfect. And I think I've learned a lot, you know, from the mistakes that I've made in the past, you know, there's things that help, uh, you know, on the photographer side where, you know, it's so important to make sure you have a camera that has dual card slots, you know, so you can, you can take backup images on a, on a camera, um, or always having a second photographer to be your backup. So, um, you know, just things like that. And I also, I think preparing the vendors and the clients before the wedding day actually really plays into making a really successful day on the wedding so that you don't mess up so that you have a uh, wiggle room for like things if they don't go on time um, and stuff like that. But yeah, it's, it's a lot of pressure. I mean, you only get one chance, so you, you better do it right. <laughs> <laughs> I just like feel like that would not be conducive to my personality at all. Like you would totally freak out. <laughs> I would yeah. freak out. I have like a little like shudder of fear, I think even thinking about it. Like <laughs> so out of like my realm of comfort. Um but because Morgan, so you have the Let's Be Honest About Business podcast, which I love. And since that's the title of your podcast, I'd love if you shared, honestly shared, like, what was one of your biggest mistakes you felt like you made? And like, how did you recover? Ooh, that's a good question. So, you know, I've been really blessed in the sense that I have not like been one of those photographers who's lost images on a wedding day or, you know, just like not showing up. I've always tried to be super careful about that because I'm going into a wedding day knowing that already, like it's the most important day for somebody. Um, I, I'll, I'll be honest and say that the, um, the biggest mistake I've made in business was actually at an engagement session. Um, so client ended up being a great situation, but you know, clients were, um, were awesome and everything. We were planning a engagement session and I did not check the weather <laughs> for the oh, engagement no. session beforehand. And so we show up at this brand new location that I've never shot at before, um, which was my first mistake. You know, I should have like checked out the location beforehand. Um, and we end up having to walk like a mile to our, uh, our photo shoot location. And we start, I see that clouds are rolling in. It was a sunrise session and we start wrapping up and I tell the couple, like, we need to go. It looks like it's going to storm. 
And we just were not prepared for the amount of rain and hail that we were going to get dumped on. And oh my gosh. at this particular <laughs> location, there was no uh, shelter. So we had we were getting dumped on. They had a small dog. They were kind of already sick from like the week before. Um, and we had nothing we had nothing to do but walk back and try to run back. But like the rain and hail was weighing us down. It was so hard to wa- even walk, um, you know, for like a mile during the storm. And, um, you know, I tried to like be really super positive about it. All of my equipment got soaked. They got soaked. Um, their dog was like, it's a really, really tiny, like handheld dog, like (laughs) was just miserable. Um, you know, they, one, the bride lost one of her shoes. Um, the groom's phone got destroyed. And, um, so I, you know, I just kept like thanking them, like, you know, thank you guys so much for, you know, being positive and like for showing up and whatever. I delivered the images and didn't hear back from them. And then come time from, for their wedding, like I was, you know, they had, as a photographer, you take payment 30 days before the wedding, uh, uh, full payment. And, um, yeah, I hadn't heard back from them. Like they hadn't filled out their questionnaire or whatever. So I, I reached out and I was like, Hey, just want to make sure like everything is okay. And I finally get this email from the bride and groom and they're like, Hey, just so you know, like we're really upset about the engagement session. We think you could have been more prepared, blah, blah, blah. So, um, you know, I ended up like, uh, you know, totally being like, you know, you're so right. Like that that was my fault. I should have checked the weather. I should have been more prepared and like known about the place beforehand. I, I, I've learned that for next time I need to bring umbrellas, like, you know, all this stuff ended up being a really great situation. And they ended up like loving their wedding photos and like having the best experience ever. But, but for sure, that was probably my uh, biggest mistake, which is funny because I'm actually going to make a podcast about the mistakes that I've made in business. So, um, (laughs) uh, but yeah, that was, that was by far probably like the biggest mistake I've made, just not being prepared for what, you know, I I think there's a lot I could have done on the front end as far as preparing my clients. And I didn't do that in this particular situation. Right. Yeah. Because you almost have that responsibility of like taking care of them in person, which is such a foreign concept as a stationer because we're nice and cozy, like in our apartments and our homes and our studios and like don't really have to leave you know, we don't have to leave um, to like serve our clients well. Um, thank you for sharing that. And I look forward to hearing the rest of your episode, not because I want to hear your mistakes, but <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Because- A lot of other people do, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it just helps make us all human. Um, yeah. Okay. So we'll cut back into kind of like those vendor relationships again in terms of our questions. But when it comes to working with other vendors, is there etiquette that you consider super important, whether that's the wedding day or just interacting with other vendors in general, especially as the photographer? Because I think people look towards the photographer as such like a pivotal moment of the day. It's like the wedding planner, then it's you. (laughs) Yeah, you make a great point. And I think a lot of people um, overshadow that. But like, we really are running the day, especially if there's not a planner there. So yeah, I think proper etiquette should be had throughout the whole process, though. I mean, obviously, on the wedding day, communicate a lot with the vendors you're working with. I see this so many times where a lot of vendors like to keep to themselves on a wedding day, and I don't understand why that is. So communication is definitely a key factor to great etiquette, and Mm -hmm. it will more than likely get you working with certain vendors again. You're all there to make sure that the couple has the best day ever. You're a team that day, regardless of whether or not you own a business together. So I do my very best to introduce myself personally to every vendor as soon as I can on the wedding day. I mean, obviously, there's times where I'm busy photographing something or whatever. But if I'm not, if my second photographer is not busy, I'll have her go and um, introduce herself and all that. But yeah, be professional and excited to work with the vendors that you're working with. And this is specifically for any photographers listening, but if you promise photos to vendors, you need to deliver your end of the promise. 
And as far as vendor etiquette goes in regards to how they treat photographers and share their images, be respectful to photographers on the wedding day and after the wedding day and communicate with photographers on the wedding day. If you don't know if a particular photographer shares their images, don't immediately approach approach them and complain about how photographers never share their images because that looks so petty. And to hear that as a photographer, especially if you're one that does share images, it makes you think that you'll gossip about us behind our backs. And then don't come from a place of expectation. Come from a place of, I would absolutely love to see these images from this day, but more importantly, how can I help you and support your, you and your business? And how can we help each other moving forward? And then don't get mad when a photographer doesn't have images ready after a week. Most photographers spend four to (laughs) six weeks editing those images unless they're working with an editor. And so, you know, I think a lot of times vendors just don't understand that side and just aren't properly educated. Um, And then most importantly, um, properly credit the photographer when you choose to share images. And this includes images that you use on your website too, not just Instagram. So make sure that the images that you share link back to the photographer's website and don't just tag the photographer in the photo on Instagram. Make sure you also tag them in in the caption. And then just more than anything, be thankful when a photographer does choose to share images with you. Yeah, um, I love what you're saying about, well, all these points, actually, I'm just nodding my head, but um, about being a team for the bride and groom on the wedding day, because it is so true. Like, even though we're all different businesses, we're all different vendors, it all comes together for one event. So it really is like a team effort. Um, So as a stationer, I try to make it as easy as possible for the photographer to want to give me images back of my work, and to actually take those images. So I always reach out to the photographer ahead of time, to the planner ahead of time, send them copies of the invitation suite um, so the bride doesn't have to keep up with it on our wedding day and they get them earlier. And I know Elizabeth does this as well, but sometimes the photographers aren't as cooperative. It's just like there's this weird gap sometimes. Like Elizabeth had sent hers and the photographer didn't want to shoot them early. Elizabeth, what was your story? (laughs) Yeah, it was was strange because... Morgan, I'm sure you can relate like that you would be super thankful to have a wedding suite beforehand just to give you like time to play with it and figure the layout. And like even if you weren't going to shoot it until the day of just to have it. Yeah, I always ask my brides to send it to me in the mail beforehand. (laughs) Yeah, and that's amazing. So think about like having the stationer contact you to be like, hey, I'm going to send you one directly. You'd be like, wow. (laughs) Or hopefully you'd be like, wow, that's so nice. But I did reach out to a photographer last fall for a huge luxury wedding for um, one of my brides, like the biggest job I've had to date. And I was actually really shocked when her photographer replied back, no, that she did not want everything early. And she gave all of these different reasons what that I considered excuses for it and it was okay because I was like all right I'll respect that like it's your process but at the same time I was disappointed because well gosh like here's like hours literally hours I've like put into this and to this huge scale wedding and to have it like turned away I didn't know what to do and I actually talked to the um, wedding planner and she was just as surprised as I was So anyhow, um, she still ended up like shooting it the day of and everything, of course, just like didn't want it early. But that was kind of like an unheard of weird situation. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That was the exception. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, it's almost like a a disservice to the client because we know that our clients are if they're booking a custom stationary designer, they're very invested literally and figuratively into their invitation design. They're going to want photos to capture it. And when the photographer doesn't want to shoot it or doesn't style it correctly, then you're like, oh, all this, they didn't get the photo that they wanted for their album. They don't have that keepsake photo, but I mean, they have the suite to keep, but yeah, it can be, it can definitely be frustrating on our end to um, see that kind of flippancy about the details. Obviously things are about, it's about the couple, but we know that the couple truly love this, this suite and they want to see those um, photos captured as well. Yeah, I mean, obviously you make a great point if they're spending a lot of money on luxury, you know, invitations like they should have. I mean, what if their house burns down, you know, and they can't keep (laughs) that suite, you know, Um, they should they should have an image of it. That's that. I think that's why a lot of couples too, like they, you know, 
sometimes photographers overlook like ceremony detail photos or like um, reception detail photos, but then the bride, the bride and groom never have a chance to actually see it before, you know, people fill the room. And so, you know, they, they want to know that everything that they, um, you know, spent time doing and put so much effort and money into, how, they want to see how it paid off. And so I think that's why those detail photos are so important. Right. Yeah. And it, and the thing is, as stationers, we're not going to be there on the wedding day to shoot the photos or take photos of the suite ourselves. And even if we were, I would feel weird having a camera with a photographer around. Like that's almost yeah. like an <laughs> insult to the photographer being like, oh, yeah. Oh, I don't yeah. Photographers hate that. Picture. <laughs> yeah. So like totally a catch 22, which just brings us back to the point like we we really want to collaborate with vendors and share the photos collectively. And as the photographer at that like burden is totally on you, which can be kind of frustrating as well on your end, I'm sure. But um, because the vendors, the florist never gets to recreate, they don't have extra copies or extra prints of their flowers or the cake baker or whatever. That's like their one shot. So if the photographer doesn't capture it, they might not get any photos of it at all, which is, it's kind of sad. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, for sure. (laughs) Okay, looping this back in terms of like etiquette from our end, Morgan, because like as stationers, we're just trying to do like what we can to get our work in front of the right vendors, specifically the photographer or the planner, or whoever needs it on the wedding day. So, from your perspective, like if you were to hear from a stationer out of the blue, is there specifically anything that you would want to hear from us? Would you want, like, for example, would you want examples of the suite already, like, laid out? Like, how it could be shot on the wedding day? Like, what would be helpful to you as a photographer when working with the wedding stationery? I guess that's my main question. (laughs) Yeah, I mean... That's an interesting question because like, you know, you could, you could give ideas on like how you want it laid out, but that might play differently on the wedding day. I mean, especially for me, like I try to use details that the, you know, let's say the jewelry that the bride is wearing or like certain flowers that they have. And so, you know, some things just work better with certain things. Um, And so, I mean, as a photographer, I always appreciate getting the um, the suite beforehand. Um, and it, it's really, you know, I've never actually like had a, had a um, designer or stationer like reach out to me beforehand and be like, hey, can I send you my whole suite? Um, I always have to ask the bride and groom to send me their suite, um, which is totally fine. And they always do that. But it'd be really cool to form that relationship with a calligrapher or designer Um and, uh, you know, have them like actually take initiative. Um, you know, I, th- I think there's ways to reach out to photographers. You know, you, there's a difference between reaching out in a, in a way of like, um, expectation, you know, like I would love these photos. Like, you know, we have, we have vendors all the time that reach out just for expectation. Like they just mm-hmm. want images, but they don't actually reach out in, in, the in a, in the form of like, Hey, here's who I am. Here's what I want to do to help both of our businesses. How can we like form this relationship? And then, oh, by the way, like I would absolutely love it to share the images that you're, you know, creating. Um, there's, there's a huge difference and it can make a big impact when it comes to, um, you know, whether you get images back or not from the photographer, if that makes sense. (laughs) That makes total sense. (laughs) For sure. It's, yeah, it's definitely like a two-way street between all of the vendors for sure. Um, Okay, this kind of leads us into our big question, like the pivotal point of the episode. (laughs) (laughs) If photographers are afraid, quote unquote, to share their photos, why do you think that is? Because I feel like there's that... um, that feeling for photographers of like maybe not receiving credit or having weird filters put on it. Or it seems like there's this like weird stigma around that idea of sharing and that photographers from other vendors standpoints, like seem afraid for some reason. So could you kind of like enlighten us (laughs) about that a little bit? 
Yeah, I don't think you're wrong in assuming that. I That's a really great question. I don't think photographers are afraid to share their images per se. In fact, I think they would love it if their images were shared. But I think it's more that there's apprehensions when a vendor asks for images. And there's three reasons why. So the first reason is that most vendors have no prior relationship with a photographer. So for them to blatantly just ask for photos, it sounds more like they're asking, hey, can you do this thing for me even though you have no idea who I am? Now, I'm not saying that that's wrong to do so. And obviously we touched up on this a little bit, but it's important to try to build a relationship with whoever you'll be working with. And by simply asking the question right off the bat, you're just setting yourself up to not make a good impression. So the second thing that most vendors is that most vendors come from a place of expectation rather than a place of, hey, how can this help both of us in our businesses? And a lot of times photographers feel that vendors don't actually understand the amount of work that goes into finishing a gallery and send it off. You know, when you think about a wedding day, most vendors, they just show up on a couple's wedding day, they finish a job on the wedding day, and then they never have to think about the wedding or couple again. Whereas if you're a photographer, you're doing a lot of the work up front before the wedding day to prep your clients and vendors, at least hopefully you are if you're a good photographer. You do a lot of work on the actual day, and then by the time the day is over, the bulk of your work hasn't even started yet because most photographers are editing their own, own images, then more than likely taking time to blog the wedding and share to social media and delivering the images, then likely after that, they're starting the album design process. I mean, sometimes for me, it takes up to six months and sometimes even more to offboard a client after their wedding day is done, if you include prints and albums. So there's a lot of work on the back end that a lot of vendors just don't see. So to have a vendor just flat out ask, hey, hey, can I have the images? It just it can come off as unappreciative on that vendor's side, which brings me to my third point of why photographers might be afraid to share their images. And that's that a lot of vendors are not good at properly crediting a photographer and the images that they're sharing freely with other vendors. And this goes both ways, honestly. Photographers need to get better at crediting vendors involved in the wedding day, but vendors also need to get better at crediting photographers, if, a, if especially if a t- photographer is going to be sharing their work with them in order to hopefully reach more potential clients. So I know that's a bit lengthy, but I think those are the three apprehensions that I think most photographers have when it comes to sharing their images with vendors. And obviously we're going to touch up on solutions for both the photographer and the vendor side later on in this episode. But yeah, that's why I think a lot of photographers struggle with it. Um, so ha- ha- if you've already shared photos in the past, have, have you been burned by this? Has this caused you to lose, like in your experience when you've shared photos, what has been the result (laughs) is what I'm looking for here. Yeah. I mean, so I think I come from a, you know, from a place of like, you know, you know, I think if my images are going to be shared, you know, without credit or just regardless, I'd rather have people, I'd rather just give them freely than for me to, you know, covet those so closely, (laughs) you know, if that makes sense. And yeah, I mean, I've definitely gotten burned or like, I guess, upset when a vendor is sharing an image that I'm really proud of and not crediting me. But I think getting burned is a choice. You can choose to be really upset when a vendor doesn't properly credit you or share something without your permission, or you can choose to see it as an opportunity to reach out to that vendor and possibly make a new connection in the industry. So if you're a photographer who has had this happen to you, understand that most people aren't aware of copyright laws or how to use use images properly. As a vendor, understand that photographers own those images and have the right to ask you to take those down at any given point. And if they do, then you need to take them down. Otherwise, legal action can be taken. But most of the time, photographers just want to be properly credited. So if you if I do ever see something that I recognize as an image that I took and another vendor is sharing it to hopefully attract more potential clients, I'll usually just politely direct message them and say something along the lines of, hey, wasn't so-and-so's wedding so gorgeous? I absolutely loved photographing it and I would love it if you wouldn't mind properly crediting me in your post. Thank you so much. And most of the time, vendors, they have no problem adding the tag to their posts. What's wrong is when photographers call out vendors via Instagram stories or posts and then put them on blast and then all their other photographer friends go and comment with the photographer's name. I think that's such a gross and tacky thing to do in the industry and you should never put someone on blast, especially for something they may not be properly educated about. And that's just the thing. Like Most people just aren't educated about Im- sharing image etiquette, if that makes sense. So, um, But yeah, Honestly, I think it's really just an attitude thing. I mean, Elizabeth, you know how I work. I I come from a 
perspective of like, I'm going to share these images regardless. Yes, I'd want people to like properly credit me, but I'd rather, you know, be the vendor who like is proactive about it and shares those images with other vendors so they have them and then they want to work with me again. And then that just kind of helps establish a great, I think, I think on the photographer side, you have so much opportunity to establish great relationships in the industry because you're, you're in control of like who, how vendors get to see and share those images. And I'd rather provide, there's nothing worse than like shooting a wedding with a vendor and them sharing an, like a cell phone photo on their Instagram. Like I'd rather, like, then that's a reflection on me. Like I didn't take that photo, you know, like I'd rather be able to give them a beautiful photo that they can share and use for their website. And then it's also a a reflection on me as a photographer. Right. And you honestly would have more control over your images by giving them permission to use them rather than them, you know, you post it on Instagram, they screenshot it and then take the or yeah, post the screenshot or something like you're giving control, you're making sure the final um, images are high quality. So like it just reflects good on you in terms of the final product delivered and those vendor relationships. So I mean, what can you really lose? (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) I think there's such an interesting stigma and I'm going to like step into uncomfortable territory. (laughs) I knew you would do it. Um, (laughs) And in no blame on like Morgan or like any of us, I think there's this weird, like this feeling in the industry and it's hard to get past it. I think it's really hard for any vendor to get past it. And I know it is for me, but I love that what what you've been talking about, about like expectations and stuff, Morgan, it's been really enlightening for me. But I know that for a wedding day, it is so many vendors that are working together, right? So there's this mentality in the industry of like, and I'm just going to put this out there and there's like no blame that, well, quote unquote, the photographer wouldn't have anything beautiful to shoot if the vendors hadn't provided beautiful work. So I feel like that's where that sense of like entitlement comes from. And I think as vendors, and I'm saying like, I'm faulty for this too, that I feel entitled to like a right to those. And it's hard because it's like, yes, the copyright of those images totally belongs to the photographer because that photography in itself is work but behind that photo there's all these work from these other vendors and I feel like it just like causes there's like just this undercurrent of like tension and I almost don't know how to like get rid of that you do do you see what I'm saying Morgan like it's such this like weird like weird thing (laughs) yeah I get what you're saying and I believe me like I you know I want like as an artist, I want like what I produce to be beautiful and shared over and over again, you know, um, and and I can totally get that, you know, um, and I, I think it's wrong for, for vendors to like, I don't know, maybe like maybe you could change your mindset about it. Like, yes, you produce those those beautiful invitations and everything, but like um I think as a vendor, like you can choose to get burned as well, you know, <laughs> um, and I, I right. mean, you, you can do your best. All you can do is your best by, you know, if, obviously when it comes down to it, like a photographer is going to choose whether they share their images or not. Hopefully the vendors that you're working with, the photographers that you're working with will share those images and realize that there's benefits in sharing those images. And that's part of what this podcast episode is about. Like we're educating photographers and other vendors, you know? Um, So hopefully it like brings more awareness to the community or industry as a whole. But, um, but yeah, I mean, like, I think, you know, there's things that you can do as a calligrapher and a stationer and designer, like you can reach out and try to build that relationship. And I mean, obviously that didn't work out necessarily like super well for, for you with that one, (laughs) that one photographer you, um, you contacted, but, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I would be interested to see like, if you kept, kept trying it, or maybe even like, if you have photographer friends in the industry, just say like, Hey, like I have this really awesome, uh, set that I'm really, really proud of. Like, do you think you would, be able to like you know photograph it for me and I don't know like maybe just 
I don't know, send them a greetable for it or like, <laughs> I don't know, I love yeah. greetable or, you know, some there's a, there's a lot of things, ways you can work around it. I think in general, you know, we tend to see the wedding industry as like super catty and very clicky and all that. And which in a sense it is, I mean, we've kind of talked about <laughs> that before, like in, in the mastermind actually, but like, you know, I think once you establish those relationships and, you know, if you continue to choose to show up and have a good attitude about it, you know, you'll work past that and and you'll realize that people, everyone in the industry is like struggling as to some degree. And, mm -hmm. you know, those relationships really help to build our businesses. So, yeah. yeah. What do you <laughs> so because I, I love the perspective of building a relationship, which I think is so important. And I, but I also feel like as a vendor who's so far removed, like most of my weddings are shot out of state, you know, like these are vendors I never get the chance to meet in person. So like what are good steps I can take to continue a relationship when I don't, you know, when I'm not going to like see them in person, whereas like you might get to see the same florist or planner or videographer like multiple times in a year, Morgan, if you happen to be like working on the same wedding. Um, I don't know if you have like any insight on that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think you have an advantage in the sense that like you can literally choose who you want to work with and it doesn't matter where they're located. Now, obviously, a lot more work is going to go in on your end just because you're not going to be able to see that person um in person mm -hmm. um and so it's obviously a lot harder to build relationships you know when you're virtually versus like in person and you know that totally makes sense but um you know there's there's a few things that you can do um you can after the wedding i mean obviously also before like reach out to that vendor i i always get a uh I always send a questionnaire out to my clients six weeks before the wedding. So I get to know all the vendor information um, and who they're all working with. And that's something that you could do too on your end, like just get a questionnaire and find out who all the vendors are. Um, and then okay. reach out yeah, to, I love that idea. yeah. And then reach out to all the vendors, just take time to introduce yourself and say, you know, let me know if there's anything that I can do, you know, to make this experience easier on you guys. Um, and then maybe even like take it one step further after the wedding, send thank you cards to all the vendors, you know, I, and it sounds weird because like, it's not like they're necessarily doing anything for you, especially like a DJ or like, you know, <laughs> maybe even the florist or whatever, but like just you're, you're starting to build that report by doing so. Um, in terms of, you know, let's say if you have a photographer who ended up sharing photos with you or, you know, a planner that you worked really well with, I would simply email them after the, the wedding and just say, hey, I loved working with you. Just going to let you know that I, I put you on my preferred vendor list because I'd love to work with you again. Just, you know, I've had so many uh, vendors that have done that on my end. And just knowing that they've put me on their preferred vendor list has like made it clear for me to put also put them on my preferred vendor list. Um you know, and so it's it kind of just like works both ways. And obviously, I'm not going to put somebody on my preferred vendor list I didn't like working with. But, you know, mm -hmm. most of the people who like email me and they're like, yeah, you're on my preferred vendor list now. It's like, yeah, I absolutely love working with you. Like, boom, you're on. <laughs> um, and I think that really helps. Now, if you're if you're um, working with somebody who's in Georgia, um, you know, take time out of your day to go and meet that person. Like say, Hey, like, can I bring you coffee or like, and it's kind of, it is an investment on your end because you know, you might be like buying them a bouquet of flowers or like paying for their coffee or whatever. But like, I think those small investments really pay off in the long run. I mean, I've done that a lot where mm -hmm. like, I've, I've gone out and met like, you know, owners of venues and like, ask them if I've, I've, um, a lot of venues that I love working at, I, uh, offer a free photo album for them. And I've gone and like, you know, it's like a $400 investment and I've dropped it off and, and it's gotten me so many clients at like those venues that I really like working with. So it pays off in the long run and it is a lot of work on the front end, but you know, there's certain things that you can do to help, to help kind of offset that, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. I've, I think our biggest struggle is truly is the like not being there in person. It, it is hard to offer, a, for example, 
for me to say to a photographer in Seattle, I'll add you to my preferred vendor list, they would be like, okay, well, (laughs) I'm not in Georgia. So I feel like that might not work as well for a stationer. But in terms of like vendor relationships in general, I think that's like such a great approach for building friendships. Yeah, well, and I would say, you know, you might think it might not work, but do it anyway. You know, that's that's part of what owning a business is like, you know, we we try things and do things until they work. And, you know, it, so if it doesn't work, they're in Seattle, whatever, like, you know, maybe like five years down the road, they're still doing photography and they have a client who's coming from Georgia or whatever. And they they remember, oh, like I know this. I know the stationer in, in Georgia. So, um, you know, there's been a lot of things that I've done in my business and I'm like, oh, my gosh, I don't think this is working or I don't know if it's going to work. And, you know, you, you keep doing it anyway. And, you know, eventually it pays off. So you never know, like if it if it will pay off, you know, it's you know, that something like that is easy. Like it's just a simple email and and it may like maybe like three years down the road, it may pay off. So. Okay. I have another question that's unrelated to vendor friendships, but <laughs> um, so what about when brides give you the photos? Like a lot of times I've had brides mess- email me and say, here are my wedding photos. Feel free to share. And I do have enough knowledge to know I don't have explicit permission to use these. It's not from the photographer. But how do you handle those types of situations where your clients are the ones giving permission, I'm doing air quotes right now, um, to use the photos? Are you reaching out to your client, educating them, or are you going to the vendor directly if you see them using your photos? That's a good question. So, um, you know, I, I... I think I come from a perspective as, especially as a photographer, where I'm just a little more, I guess, lackadaisical. Is that the word? I don't know if that's the word. Yeah, lackadaisical. Lackadaisical, yeah. yeah. <laughs> About it. Like, I, you know, I, I could care less. Like I'd rather have vendors have my photos and that's why I try to be very proactive about it on the front end and just give them to vendors anyway and not have them go through. I I don't want them to like, what sucks is when vendors like reach out to brides and like a bride doesn't even have her images back yet. And like, she's getting bothered by other vendors. Like I don't want that because then it makes a bad experience for my bride. So I'd rather just reach out and give the vendors photos. But for photographers that, you know, don't do that, um, uh, you know, I would, as a, as a calligrapher, um, or any other vendor, I would just reach out to the vendor and say, Hey, guess what? So-and-so gave me these images and I absolutely love, um, you know, this particular image or this particular image. And I was just wondering if you wouldn't mind sharing it. I obviously plan on properly crediting you. Um, you know, so I, I wouldn't, I would not reach out to the bride about it. And as a photographer, I wouldn't educate my bride about it. Um, but, but yeah, it, as as you as a vendor could always just reach out and just say, hey, I love this image and I would love to share it. And most photographers, like they'd they'd so much rather you do that than like just share an image and like not credit them. So um what if you share it and credit them? How do you feel about that? <laughs> I feel fine about it. Like I like okay. I said, I've always come from a place where I like I'd rather like you know, I don't, I don't want to be that person who's like, Hey, um, please don't share that image. Like, <laughs> cause then that's just the no, bad reflection yeah. and image on myself. And so, um, so I, I, you know, I, I tend to not care. I do care when people share images and they don't credit me. Then that's when I'm like, okay, Hey, I loved working at this wedding. Can you please just add my tag to the end of this post? Like, and it's super simple, nothing to like get upset about or anything, but like, just simply asking for that credit. Um, And as a vendor, know that like, if you do get images back from a bride, like that's great. But yeah, always ask about it, ask the photographer about it or whatever. Um, You know, some photographers have their certain images on a wedding day where like, you know, maybe they're not necessarily super proud of. So like, if you're I don't know, maybe wanting to share like a family photo or whatever. And like, they're super particular about the lighting in that particular photo, you know, maybe a photographer wouldn't necessarily be proud of you sharing that image image. So I would just ask like, Hey, what images are you super proud of? And also what images am I super proud of that we can like both share together? Yeah. I totally love your attitude on this. Just bringing up the whole industry by collaborating together and just like knocking down the walls being like, Hey, we all worked on this. We can only make each other better by sharing these images. Like it brings business to you. It brings exposure to you marketing. I mean, it's like a win-win for everyone. 
Um, so in terms of adding that process, what are you doing? How are you sharing these images? Like, are you just sending out a gallery to all the vendors at the end of the wedding? Or are you collecting emails? What is your process like on that? Yeah, this is a great question. So <laughs> since you brought this up, I'm going to I'm gonna go ahead and just pull up one of the most recent emails that I've sent. Um, so like I said, I... Um, so six weeks before the wedding, I I get an, a questionnaire back from my clients, and that includes everything that I need to know about the wedding day, um, including a, a complete vendor list. And so from there, I take that vendor list, and then um, about a week before the wedding, I introduce myself to all the vendors. So for example, I have, I'll have i read you this email that I um, that I sent a couple days ago to all the vendors. I have a wedding in New York. Um, uh, January 20 or March 29th. So, uh, so this is the most recent email that I sent to all these vendors. So it reads, hi everyone. For those of you who don't know, my name is Morgan and I'll be photographing. I won't read my couple's name, but <laughs> I will be traveling to New York from Colorado and I cannot wait for their wedding. And I'm thrilled to be able to document your artisanship at the end of this month. I know their wedding will be beautiful. Thanks to each of you. Because this is such a great opportunity for us to collaborate, I've put together an Instagram cheat sheet in case you want to share images from their wedding day on your social media. I tried to make it as easy to, as possible to simply copy and paste. And then I have a list of all the ven- vendors plus their Instagram names. I did my best to find everyone's Instagram info from their websites, but if I missed you, please feel free to add. Lastly, my goal is to send the team 45 to 55 sneak peek images from so-and-so's wedding no later than five to seven days after their wedding, so you won't have to wait any long too long to share your amazing work the entire wedding gallery will be completed about two to three weeks after their wedding date and each of you from the creative team will have full access to the high resolution images for you to use and share as part of this amazing event if you have any questions please don't hesitate to drop me a line i look forward to seeing you and meeting you all all on the 29th so that's an email that i send out and it just kind of like gets uh gets me on their radar so that when I show up on the wedding day, they kind of already have an idea of who I am and kind of already have like a good, um, uh, image of who I am. And then, uh, and then after the wedding day, so something that I do is I, I actually blog about 50 images the very next day. Um, and so the same after the wedding day, I send all the vendors a sneak peek gallery, which is like 50 images. And I just say, Hey, it was so great to work together again. Here's, here's everybody's Instagram info. Um, and also I created a blog link. If you want to share this link, you're more than welcome to on your social media. Um, so, uh, so they have those uh, sneak peeks to share immediately after. And then I follow up again once the gallery is completed and I just send another email and just kind of like offboard that process. Um, and again, like share all the Instagram info. And then I, I do have at the beginning of every single gallery, I have a, I've created a PDF that educates cli- uh, vendors and clients on how to, how to properly share and credit images. So does that answer your question? <laughs> Um, yeah, if I got that email, I would literally die of happiness. I'd be like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. <laughs> like, that is awesome. And how awesome is that for your couple too? Because I mean, they're going to have their images shared all over social media as well as their blog posts. They're going to feel like rock stars by the end of this because all their vendors are just going to be going gaga over everything. Absolutely. So I, I truly think it adds to the client experience as well. So I'm just like over the moon right now about your process. I want to work with you. <laughs> 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 honestly I feel like that would make such a huge difference because for me like I can't I don't think I've ever received an email like that before you know most vendors don't (laughs) yeah and that's why Morgan that's why I think you're doing something that's so beautiful and important in the industry is you are taking the first step to make the connection you're taking like the higher ground essentially and then you're avoiding the whole like which is frustrating for you, excuse me, that vendors will come back later and ask for photos without a doubt. Like, honestly, I think that's just a knee-jerk reaction. I don't think people are necessarily considering, like, the etiquette in that circumstance. It's just that they created something beautiful that they want, and so they're going to come to you for it and not think about the human behind the screen. They're just going to be thinking about the photos that they want to use. And so you're preventing that frustrating experience And putting yourself in an amazing light for these vendors who are going to say, 
to other people in the future, oh, I worked with Morgan, I loved it. And they're going to, you know, there's going to be so much more chance that they will recommend you to other people or add you to a preferred vendor list or something along those lines. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I have just like a testimony and this, I, I have tons of testimonies from this, but like just one that I can think of off the top of my head. Um, you know, I, there's this one venue that I love working at and I've sent this email, you know, multiple times to this, this venue and the owner of the venue was on permanent leave because she had stage four cancer. And she, she personally took time out of her leave to email me and just say, Hey, I've never seen this level of care before. And I just want you to know that it's so appreciated, appreciated, appreciated. (laughs) Um, You are now on our preferred vendor list. And um, if there's anything you need, please let us know. Like, this is amazing. And we fully support this. So, you know, like it really does pay off and it it helps, I think in the, in the long run, definitely helps your business. I can say personally, it's helped my business grow. Um, and, and honestly, I think we all grow together. So if you can have that perspective as a photographer, as a vendor, you know, building those relationships first, like everything kind of just falls into place. Yeah. And you, as the photographer, you are in a very unique position to be that connection point for all the vendors because you bring all the vendors together essentially for the wedding day with your photos. Um, so like as a station or sending an email like that would just be really weird because like, <laughs> you know, we, it's not like we can connect to the, the DJ. Like, you know, you have that unique connection point. You and the planner are pretty much the only vendors I think would be able to be that unique connection point. What do you think, Elizabeth? Oh, yeah, totally. I mean, I think that's why there is that pressure or expectation on photographers and why vendors look towards the photographers, because you guys kind of are like a leader of the day, per se. But really what it comes down to is, like, as vendors, we get to work with that client once. We hope we get to work with them once. We don't want to be doing, like, another wedding for them two years later. Um <laughs> But we have the opportunity to be working with these vendors again and again. So it's even though you're serving your client first and foremost, building those relationships in a positive way will only continue to help your business to grow. And it's kind of what you said, Morgan, like a rising tide lifts all boats. And for you to take that initiative is so different um, from a lot of other people's approach, just because like I kind of brought up before, there's always just this like weird tension between vendors and I'm not quite sure all of us really know what to do with one another (laughs) or how to like interact. Um, But I was going to add too, in terms of um, offering or, or making sure that we put credit on our photos. I think when people are disorganized, I think that's a big part of the problem because they grab photos from this or that gallery that they like and they slap them in one folder on their computer that's like wedding images, right? Or portfolio images. And they don't actually like have written down who the photographer is. So you're left kind of doing the cleanup work. So as vendors, we can take responsibility for the organization on our own desktop, on our own computer, that when we do take images from a photographer who is nice enough to share them with us, um, (laughs) that we save them in a folder with that photographer's name on it. So if we ever go back to grab something, we do know how to give credit and we can give it right away and give it correctly instead of just creating this like melting pot of images where we don't know where anything comes from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. (laughs) So, yeah. um, Well, the last question we had was, what final advice do you have for stationers and calligraphers that hope to receive photos from a photographer? And I know we covered it a little bit um, earlier, but if you have a, like any final thoughts um, about that or the episode in general, we would just love to hear them before we wrap up. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And I mean, I know we already touched up on this quite a bit, but I would tell any vendor, not just stationers and calligraphers, that if you you know, you will have the best results when it comes to working with other vendors if you just work on pursuing a relationship first. Um, And then not only that, just take time to get to know the photographer you're working with and take time to get to know their work. And even if you guys would be a good fit for working together. And I think it's always important. And this goes for any business you're in and always just like a great practice in life um, to always come from a place of serving others first before getting served yourself and coming from a place of like thankfulness. And, um, you know, I, any time that I've like come from a place of like, what can I do for you? 
you know, not even like, what can you do for me? Like, what can I do for you? How can I help you? How can I help you grow your business? Whatever. Like, that's always, always, always paid off for me in the long run. And it's always helped me in my business and also just like in my own personal life. So yeah, when you come from a place of giving and service, you will always reap what you sow. So I think that, you know, that's like just a good message in general for life. But, um, but if you can, if you can <laughs> definitely play it out in your business, like your business is going to thrive so much quicker and so much better than you know if you're like kind of just in your like own little bubble and in it like just trying to figure it all out yourself so Mm -hmm. yes Morgan thank you so much for your gracious insight and advice this was so enlightening and we were just so excited to have you on the podcast can you let us know um, where everyone can find you on Instagram and your website too if they want to follow up with you yeah absolutely so Instagram is Lady Ilg simply L-A-D-Y-I-L-G and my website is ladyilgphotography.com. And if anybody listening is ever interested in listening to my podcast, that is also uh, Let's Be Honest About Business. Perfect. Yay. That was such a great way to wrap it up. Um, Morgan, we just appreciate you taking an hour out of your morning. And thank you again for talking about a topic that I know is like uncomfortable and hard for a lot of people to talk about. <laughs> so it's nice for you to be willing to like really approach it head on um, and share a lot of amazing insights. So thank you again. Yeah, of course. <laughs> thank you for having me. <laughs> Of course. And of course, you guys, um, if you have more questions, you can always submit them at Q and Cake. So any follow-up questions from Morgan, we'll try to contact her again if we need to follow up with her. But it's just bizbirthdaybash.com slash Q and Cake, and you could submit your questions there. And of course, leave us a rating or review on iTunes, and we will see you next week. Bye. Bye. Hey there, fellow stationers. Are you creating custom invitations and still sending a lackluster contract that's hacked together with Google searches and generic templates? We've got you. We've created a custom stationary contract written for stationers by stationers, and it is lawyer reviewed and approved. Hashtag legal rockstar. The custom stationary contract covers every stationary snafu, protects you and your client's interests, and sets up an expectation of professionalism. We've combined our previous contracts as well as years of experience to bring you a contract that covers your booty and your biz. So become a put together pro and breathe a sigh of relief knowing that you have a contract that is easy to understand and avoids confusing legal jargon. During launch week, the dates of April 15th to 19th, the custom stationary contract is only $197, so you can save $30 this week only. Here's the deal, even at full price, this contract will be half of what you'd expect to pay anywhere else, and it's written by two gals who have seen it all. Spoiler alert, it's us. It's time for you to do things right. Go to bizbirthdaybash.com forward slash contract to purchase and download your copy today.